Hey guys, what's up? Uh, it's me back again with another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we cross examined the um, old caretaker. He fainted or something? I have no idea what happened. And then now we have Larry. Uh, this is gonna be <laughs> difficult. So, uh, let's cross examine some stuff, some more stuff. Just get this thing to focus and not have the iPad shift around. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to all requests show to an all requests show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like but I'm sure I heard the gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What the what he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway. What this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Well, very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. I just like that first statement. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Well, of course you're alone. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can prove. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember the moment that that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back clear to me, you know. What did he say, Mister Wright? Please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could come out? Could knowing what a radio DJ said to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Gama has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. Almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. God, I know this part has a huge thing to do with the to, to do with the case. God, freaking! Oh my God. Just after midnight, I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. I feel like this is the one to this, um, thing too, but like, just after midnight, he says, hey, it's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas means it was the 24th and not the 25th when it's actually Christmas. Let's try it. Objection. <gasps> oh my god, I got it. <laughs> Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know that I don't scare that easy. There's something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. 
Just look at them. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he had the gun shop before midnight? Um... Sorry, I'm kind of just silent because I feel like someone's watching me, but I don't know. Um, let's see here. Before midnight. Could it be something about, like, the autopsy report? I don't know. Since sometime on the 24th or 25th. But this was 12.15. This would have been on Christmas Day. Larry... You wrong or you right? I don't know. You've got nothing to lose from this, so let's see. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no! I did not. <laughs> I did not agree to this. I did not agree to this. I hate life. Okay. I did not agree to this. Um, do we have a penalty or what? I think it's this one. Maybe. Oh my god. No. Oh, cool. Uh, we get multiple chances with this one. Okay, I don't know. Let's try something. Um... Mmm, I got on. <laughs> taken or is this just an overhead let's just go for it oh okay i got it right i didn't know <laughs> look at this photograph this was taken by our witness yesterday Ms. lotta hart with her automatic camera the timestamp on the photo reads december 24th 11 50 p.m oh hmm but there's nothing on the lake in the picture your honor the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph it is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor. This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are well, you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor. That night, there were two sets of gunshots, uh, with a 25-minute pause between them. That doesn't make any sense. Why would there be a 25-minute pause? That's too long. What would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. The camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed through in the camera. And hey, my nose was clear at that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. 
Can you prove to us that the loud noise at 11.50pm was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. If we have any. We have a popper, but... <laughs> Wait, then why was it fired three times? What does that make any sense? Um... You could say that the gun, maybe, maybe it's the gun, I'm not sure. I'm thinking about it. Well, let's try it. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last fired shot? Last fire shot. God dang it, Grammar. Last shot fired. Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Oh, okay. Order, order. Hmm. That wouldn't make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering what exactly did happen the night of the lake. That night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50 and one at 50 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! Oh! What's wrong, Nick? I have not I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Uh-huh, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So, you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Mr. Masaj with himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Mr. Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, Rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp photo says 015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot in the lake. Assuming whether Edward could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Shit. Oh no. Um. The murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer, Edgeworth and Hammer.
Let's try it. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Oh. What? Are you shit? Are you, are you shitting? <laughs> are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now Edward, now Edward didn't know Robert's, Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't spe suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Why did he do this? Then why did he boat to the lake then? Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? Well, then, when did this murder take place? <sighs> um... The caretaker shack, I'd say. Because that's where he was. Okay, good. I don't have penalties on this one, so if it's, like, not the wrong... If it's not the right spot. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he can meet with the victim without see anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony if you will. The night he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would he be if that, if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! Mr. Wright! What happened that night on Gold Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? <laughs> Not really. But I think I'm gonna start at the very beginning. And I take it slow, I might be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh god, that is a terrified face. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got into the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol in the boat, Mr. Wright? Um... The boat shop caretaker? Let's, let's say that. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both Miss Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if it didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details! Know this, Mr. Wright. The moments you run out of explanations, the moments you lose. Oh, heck. Oh, right. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. There's someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men out on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Once you realize that everything falls into place, the boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. 
Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Oh, God. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before! The boat shall get to go quickly! Oh my gosh, okay. Wow. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Mars Edgewood, a few questions. Mr. Edgewood, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go into the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come by the boat shop and... He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. By the way, we are conducting a trial here. I ask the jury to remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. The oh, Jesus. What? What? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. He's disappeared? Oh, snap. Mr. Von Kawa, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot de declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become... Hello, sounds. I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and him want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. Wow. Ugh. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else! He and Bunk Harmon didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax! I'm sorry, but I feel it's not going to be over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether to or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's no- there's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Oh my god. I know he's talking about DL6. Oh <laughs> god, this is so feelsy for me. <laughs> okay. Guess that was it. Okay, so next is another investigation. So, okay, so if you liked this episode, please make sure to maybe leave a like, leave a comment, or maybe even subscribe. I'll see you next time.